Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to the Value of Truth Ministries. I'm Brian Price. We're going to be continuing our study in the book of Genesis by reading chapter number 46 about the life of Joseph. It says, And Israel took his journey with all that he had, and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, and their little ones, and their wives, and the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt." And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And Joseph said unto his brethren and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brethren in my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. And the men are shepherds, for their trade hath been to feed cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass, when it, when Pharaoh shall call you, and shall say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth, even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. That was Genesis chapter number 46. You know, there are times when things are just not working out. When is it time to move on? When do you stop living in the same rundown condition and decide to make a change and move on? These are not questions that are easily answered. And it's not that simple to just pack your bags and leave. Many of us can't just up and get out of here. Sometimes it's it takes an opportunity. Sometimes it takes quite considerable amount of money. Whatever the case may be, it's not always time to leave. So, how do you know when it's time to move on? Number one, what are the signs telling you? Number two, is the opportunity there? And lastly, what is God telling you? Now, before we answer these questions, I want to briefly explain to you what we just read in Genesis chapter 46. We read here in Genesis chapter 46 about God telling Jacob to arise and go down into Egypt For it would be there that he would be reunited with his son, Joseph, who he had not seen in over 15 years. Jacob was an old man at the time, but Joseph was just 17 years old when he last saw his father. He was stolen away from his house and taken to a strange land in Egypt where perhaps he didn't even speak the language. And so he was down there as a slave for many years and then thrown into prison by false accusation. So this young man, Joseph, had been through much. And his father, as well, no doubt, had been through a lot of heartache and that he did not know what happened to his son, thinking he was dead. And so now God is telling him to arise and go down into Egypt, for it would be there that he would die and that Joseph was, would put his hand upon his eyes. God said in verse 3, And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. You can also read that God kept his promise, and the children of Israel later became the nation of Israel, which still exists to this day with all of its Jewish people. After God spoke to Jacob, he gathered up everything and took his journey into Egypt and was reunited with his son Joseph. The Bible says in verse 29, And Joseph made ready his chariot, and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen, and presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. Notice that it was time for Jacob to go down into Egypt. He had tarried long enough. 
in Beersheba. And now God wanted him to move down into Egypt to be reunited with his son. You know, and this story reminds me of the story of Pharaoh's daughter, which was Solomon's wife back a hundred years later after this very story. And the Bible says that, but Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. You see, in this particular passage, it was time for Solomon's wife to move out of her mother's house, in which she said in the Song of Solomon, I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. She said that she would lead Solomon into her mother's house, but now it was time for Solomon to lead her into her house, which he had prepared for her. It was time for her to leave the nest, so to speak, and to go be with her husband. And you know, some young women need to follow this example and stop living with their mother and go be with your husband. Once you're married, you are no longer under the authority of your parents, you're under the authority of your husband. Not once in the scriptures does it say that in a marriage, the wife's mother is the head of the household. If mama isn't on board with your husband or your wife, then maybe it's time for mama to get out of your house and go back to her own home. In-laws need to recognize that once their children get married, they are no longer children. They are adults and need to be left alone. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Ephesians chapter 5 says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time, accept it. And in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Romans chapter 13 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Hosea chapter 10 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. According to the scriptures, there is a time for everything. So when is it time for someone to move on? First, let me explain something to you. What do the signs say? In the case of Jacob, there was no more food in the land of Canaan, and there was a really bad famine going on. The signs were saying to him that it was time to find some other place to live. There was nothing left where they were already living, and it was pointless to continue living there in Canaan. This could be applied to a job situation. If you notice that your house is being run down into the ground with bills, then perhaps the signs are telling you that you need a better job. Or it may mean that there are expenses that need to be stopped. The Bible says that the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty. And if your spending habits mostly consist of pizza delivery and alcohol, that might mean that you need to start changing your diet to fit your paycheck. Or perhaps you're in a relationship that involves a famine of love. Is there a real lack of concern and love in this relationship? Are you in a desert where you're starving or thirsting to be loved as opposed to an oasis where the love is abundant? These are things to consider. Perhaps it's time for you to pack your bags and leave. Perhaps it's time to move on. I'm not advocating for divorce, but I'm simply saying that there is a time when enough is enough. It's time to move on. Next is the door of opportunity open. You know, we can try and try to force this door open, but if the door is closed, leave it alone. Many times we try to make a move when the opportunity is not there. Jesus said, knock and the door shall be open. If you knock and the door doesn't open, then perhaps Christ is telling you something that he's going to keep that door shut, at least for now. So sometimes we just need to stay put. Another thing is that the opportunity may need some more time for it to present itself again. Perhaps the door is closed for now, but give it some more time and the door might reopen. But you need to wait. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Quit trying to force the door open. If God wants you to move on, he'll open the door and it'll be easy to just walk through. Notice also in our text that the Bible says that Jacob traveled in the wagons which Pharaoh had provided. It says in Genesis is chapter 46 verse 5 and Jacob rose up from Beersheba and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him you know the Bible says that God shall supply all your need and it says here that Pharaoh had sent wagons to carry Jacob Jacob didn't have to come up with some clever plan to get down into Egypt to obey God he he just simply needed to obey God and God would make provision for his obedience and lastly what does God say in situations 
emotions that dictate us to move on or make us think that we need to move on, we need to consider what God says ultimately. He needs to be the final authority on everything. And so many times we make decisions without advice from God. We'll make uh, decisions based upon the advice from other people, but ultimately, what does God say about the whole matter? The first place anyone should look for the voice of God is in the scriptures. God's voice is not some nebulous thing out in the middle of space. It's actually found in the scriptures, in the very word of God. It's very clear. Um, the disciples said to Jesus, now speakest thou plainly. They told, Je they told Jesus, look, now you're talking to us very plainly here. And so God speaks very plainly to people. And so you can find his voice in the scriptures. When we make life-changing decisions, it's always important to involve God in those decisions. Luke chapter 4 verse 4 says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So if God is telling you to not commit sin, for example, and you decide to go ahead and go on with sin, and then problems arise in your life, don't blame God for your problems. Blame yourself that you didn't listen. And so when we make life-changing decisions, it's always important to involve God on those decisions. His counsel is the best. You can't find anything, any other advice or counsel from anybody, not a psychiatrist, not a therapist, nobody, not no doctor can give you the advice that God gives. It's the best. Luke chapter 4 verse 4 says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. When we live without the Bible, we are setting ourselves up for disaster. Even the most insignificant events in our daily lives require a daily living and meditating on the Word of God. And if you're not actively reading the Bible, then you need to find the time to have a daily reading plan. To wrap up, let me just say that time is of the essence. If we don't have a lot of time, and if we want to have happy lives, then we need to make good use of our time and recognize the signs of the times. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, O oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? Thank you for listening to the Value of Truth Ministries. I'm Brian Price.